Well, hi everyone, and a warm welcome back to the channel. Well, here we are. We're back at Green Trees Caravan Store in the heart of Norfolk, and we're on a different mission. You might recall from previous visits here, we've had a really good look at the luxury caravan market and what you can buy at the top end. And also, we've looked at some mid-range caravans. But this time, our mission is quite different because we're looking at it through the lens of someone who's thinking of buying a caravan for the very first time. So our mission is to buy the best we can with a budget of no more than 15 grand. Here goes. That's a really big market because I was speaking to James, who's one of the sales managers here. He was telling me they sell a lot of caravans in that price range and they've had a real run on them. This they place have. is not as busy as it yeah. normally is. It's half as, as, as busy, isn't it? In terms of stock, there's mm -hmm. half the stock we saw last time. They've been so busy, sold a lot. And he did say that that is a uh, and a, a price band that's very popular because for the reasons mm. we've spoke about people coming and trying it for the first time probably keep the van for a year or two before trading sort of, up trading up yeah, yeah upgrading so if you are buying for the first time what can you get for your money and maybe what sorts of things you need to be looking out for helen have you spotted anything yet i've spotted a nice little one i think it's a, a challenger sport 544 it's a 2014 um it's got a motor mover on it and it's got part service and I think three month warranty. Um, it's a nice little configuration. So let's go and have a look. Yep, let's go and check it out. Now, just before we get inside the first caravan, a couple of things to note. If you're buying a caravan for the very first time, of course you could buy it privately and maybe save yourself a little bit of money. Or you can buy from a dealer. And whichever way you look at it, there are pros and cons with both. We've done both. I think we got lucky when we bought private. Uh, and I think when we bought from a dealer, from Green Trees actually, what we got was a whole load of uh, reassurance and peace of mind. Okay, so let's take a look at the first caravan then. It's this Swift uh, Challenger Sport. In terms of price, well, it's certainly within our budget here at 12495 So that's good. Uh, and I'm just looking around the outside of the caravan initially. Want to see whether there's any uh, little scratches or whether there's any dings anywhere, little, you know, little dents in the side. And if you own one of these Challenger Sports, you'll be very familiar with them. The layout is not dissimilar to our very own Sterling Eccles 580. Got a stable door here, so that's good. So you can split the door in half, keep the dogs in. Notice there's a window on the side as well. So I wonder what that configuration will be like inside. And it looks like some sort of locker uh, towards the back end as well. I'm not sure what that is at this stage. Looking around the back of the caravan, uh, this is a, well, it needs a bit of a valet, to be honest with you. But I think this would clean up really nicely. Can't see any sort of wear and tear or knocks or damage or anything like that, which is what I'm looking for. Come around the outside and it's obvious that the uh, rear end toilet there with the filler and also the toilet cassette uh, cartridge at the bottom there. And again, when I come down this side, just searching for any scratches or any little dents. The thing about these little dings and dents is once they're in, you can't really get rid of them. This looks like it's a, a, the aerial socket for an external aerial to be connected up so you can get a better picture. So that's that. And again, I'm moving around. Another thing to consider when you are buying a secondhand caravan is uh, the condition of the tires. So very important to have a little look down. The tread on caravan tyres rarely wears out. That's not going to be your problem. What you're more concerned about is the side wall because with age, the side wall can get uh, weak and that's where you tend to get a blowout. The tyres on your caravan should not really be any more than five years old. At that point, between five and seven years, they need to be changed. Again, looking down the side here, it looks fairly good, to be honest. Noticing that the aerial on the side here looks like it could do with an upgrade. But that's not a big deal. To change that over would, would not be expensive and be a quite easy job to do. So I wouldn't be worrying about that. Coming back around the front, got a nice big size front locker here. Uh, and I'm also noticing that this cable's got some tape around it. So is there a problem with that? I'd want to get a bit of reassurance from the dealership that that is okay. Or maybe even get that replaced. Uh, just checking that the hitch is looking good and works. Seems like it is. One thing on this model as well, it's got the Alco ATC, which is always a useful safety feature, I think. And also noticing down here that there's an external 13 amp power point. And also just noticing a few small dents in this area, just to the left of my hand there. So just before we get inside the caravan, let's have a look at some of the pros and cons of buying from a dealer versus buying private. 
First of all, if buying from a reputable dealer, then you can certainly expect a warranty of three or six months, which could be negotiable. Also, you'll get a PDI, a pre-delivery inspection on the caravan. You can exercise consumer rights. The dealer's not going anywhere. They're generally based. And also, you can expect some good help, advice and support. These people know what they're talking about. And there'll be lots of after-sales service available to you from a dealer. Conversely, when buying from a dealer, you probably expect to pay more for the caravan. I mean, they are a business after all. But that paying more piece is really... I think only in the short term because paying more now will pay you back later when you've got the guarantee, the after sales, the pre-delivery and all that sort of stuff. That's what you're paying for. But the other thing is it's unlikely to come equipped. You'll need to be buying a battery. You'll need to go and get your gas. You probably have to buy all your crockery, pots and pans, an awning and all the accessories associated with buying a caravan. And that can be quite costly. Now, while we were at Green Trees, we met Gina and Kelly from Chroma. They'd previously bought a caravan privately, not for a lot of money, and they had problems. We'll talk about them and their problems a little later. But for now, let's get on the inside of this Swift. Okay, let's go and check out some of the interior features. Are we getting the home from home comforts that we're looking for? So first of all, and really important, we've got a carbon monoxide detector and a smoke detector here. Just need to check the dates on those to make sure that they're valid. Looking around, I'm not going to go through all the cupboards, but I'm really checking to see all the handles and latches work properly as they should do. And inside this one, we've got a Pioneer head unit, which looks really modern and really quite good. Looking around at the colour coordination, well, you know, the teak wood design, uh, not everyone's cup of tea. Some people think that looks a bit old fashioned, but I think it adds warmth. And looking at the colour coordinated cushions and curtains, I quite like the look of those. Not bad for a bloke. Uh, the actual cushions themselves, a little bit worn as in maybe they've lost some of their springiness, but I should imagine that's been used as a uh, converter double bed because that'll all fold out. The heating system in here, by the way, is warm air. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I found in the depths of winter when we used our first caravan with warm air, we needed to supplement the heating a little bit. The Aldi heating we find much warmer and much more efficient, but that's just a personal choice. Pull-out table here. We use this a lot in our caravan. We actually have our meals at that table, play cards and put our coffee cups on. Some nice spotlights in here, but I'm noticing that there's no USB points in those. Probably a bit pre-USB some of this. But these days you can buy lots of little USB adapters you can plug in or you can change the spots. Uh, obviously, you've got the blackout blinds here on the panoramic window and you'll have uh, blackout blinds and also fly screens on every other window and also in the sunroofs, but you just need to check all of those are functioning okay. You know, it's just a quick job, but go around and do it. In the kitchen, good size worktop uh, and a nice sort of size sink. The fridge looks to be in good condition from what I can see of it. Quick look inside here and all very clean and tidy. Not too sure where some of the door uh, shelves have gone. Just need to check that out. But all the drawers seem to function well. No damage or breakages to those. And that's what I'm looking for. Little pull out here to put some uh, food and tins and things in. I did notice that the cooker I thought was exceptionally clean for the year. It looks like it's hardly been used to be honest. So the, the grill and the oven itself really clean and shiny. And then on top you've got three gas and one electric um, hob there. And I think again looks really clean and tidy. So that's very reassuring. Cover space plenty of and also in here, you've got a microwave, which is the same as the one that we've got in our caravan. And again, very clean and tidy inside, as you can see. Over here, space to put your um, plates and your mugs and stuff. And I'm just checking out the sunroof, the blinds that I reference here. Go around and check all those in every single window. Make sure there's no tears or rips or they're all sort of functioning properly, really. That's what you're looking for. Looking around on this side, it's obviously got a solar panel fitted. I think that was a retrofit looking at that, the way it's fitted. But it doesn't matter, it's there and it's functioning because the light's on there. So that's really good. And then over here, you've got a space to put a TV. There's a TV point in the corner. And here is where they keep the cutlery in that drawer, which is sort of quite strange, I think. And then a bit of space underneath, which is very, very good. Now, moving towards sort of the rear end of the caravan, you can see here no fixed bed so you're gonna to have to make up a double bed here now it looks like you can make up two double beds because this is a great dining area and i really like the look of this feature made into a double that would be a french bed 
Again, not everyone's cup of tea. You'd have to clamber over each other to get to the loo in the night. I suspect, though, most people will have made up the front. Got some shelves in the corner with some lights and somewhere to put a cup of coffee and all that sort of stuff, or maybe some ornaments or a bookshelf. Just checking to make sure those shelves are sound, and they were, so that's really good. And uh, some good locker space, as you can see, all the way around with lighting over the pelmets as well. I think the lighting in the caravan overall looked really quite good, to be fair, and plenty of space for storage. Now, also towards the uh, back end of the caravan, you've got this sort of double wardrobe. So two doors open up, got some carpet stored inside, but that's also where your TV aerial and booster is. Rail across the top for hanging. By the way, when you're looking around the caravan at this stage, also looking out for signs of any damp anywhere. Not always easy to spot, I must say. So you would want to have a look at a damp report from the dealer as well. See when it was last done. And if necessary, get an independent check. Nice vanity mirror here. A couple of hooks to hang up some stuff. There's a table that's a fold-up. I normally take those out. I think it's added weight. We never use them. But it would fit down the front there, as you can see. Uh, and, of course, you don't need it because you've got a dining table over here. So why would you carry another table? I suppose it's uh, horses for courses. This bit here, by the way, this blind, this um, lifts up so you can have a TV on one side. And at night time, if you're sleeping in the French bed, lift that blind up, turn your TV around, and you can watch TV in bed from this side as well if you want to. So rear end toilet, uh, good wash basin here. Got the Thetford toilet and um, a couple of shelves, warm air heating coming through into the toilet and a good shelf here to store toiletries on. Um, and again, another cupboard here to put in more bits and pieces. Yeah, the sink I think is great because you can get over the top of that and have a shave, no problem. Good size shower. And again, where damp's concerned, looking for any signs of damp in the washroom. Uh, the shower floor, I'd be looking for any cracks to see if that was cracked because if it was, then water could get in underneath that and create damp. So look out for those. As I say, not easy to spot and you'd want to look at the damp report and I would suggest if you were thinking of buying this caravan, maybe getting an independent um, service engineer to come and have a little look and do that report for you. So a quick look at some of the spec on this Swift Challenger Sport 544. It's a 2014 model. Uh, price is £12,495. And uh, its overall length is 7.25 metres. Width wise, 2.25 metres. The unladen weight, 1292 kilograms. And then the MTPLM, that's the Maximum Towing Permissible Laden Mass, I think I've got that right, is uh, 1445 kilograms. So a lot of cars will be able to pull this without too many problems at all. It's got a part service history, so I would be asking to have a little look at that to see when was it last serviced and how regularly. Like I say, look at the damp report. But the other key feature, I think, with this caravan is it comes with a motor mover fitted. And that's really important for a caravan of this size. If you're having to fit a motor mover, which often you would have to, then you're looking at a cost of about another £1,000. So I think that's a bit of a plus. You just need to check the functionality of that before you take it away. Ask to see it actually working. Uh, but other than that, I think there's a lot of caravan here for the money. So a good start. So I'm going to go and find Helen. Has gone missing. 12495, Helen, quite a nice van. Where are you? So next we've got the Explore 554. It's a 2018 model. It's four berth. It comes in at 14995, so we've got a fiver left of our £15,000 budget. Um, it's got an island bed, and you actually get quite a lot for your money uh, with this caravan. It's very bright and airy. I quite like that. Okay, we'll be quick on this one. I don't like the front of it. I don't like the styling so much on the outside, but I'll go with Helen on this and take a look inside. Don't be put off by these black seals. Someone's had a go at trying to whiten them back up and not done a great job, but that's an easy fix. You can scrape that out, replace it with some new sicker flex, very easy, and it'll look nice and bright and white. In terms of specification, 7.38 meters uh, total length. The width is 2.18 meters external. Unladen weight, 11.59 kilograms, so not heavy at all. And the MTPLM, 13.35 kilograms. So again, uh, most cars will pull this without any issue at all. Service history, a part service history. You'd need to investigate that further. When was it last serviced? How regularly? But really good point here that the warranty six months on this. So the dealer's feeling confident you're getting a good van for your money. 
You can see a bit of the layout. We've got stills and pictures on this. We're going to be very quick. Let's have a quick look round it. So I had a good look round the outside of the caravan. I have to say the bodywork looked in very good condition indeed. As far as the inside is concerned, actually really bright and airy. And look at these front benches. They're really wide, very comfortable. I sat on those, felt really comfortable. That obviously makes into a front double bed as well. And that would be quite a big bed. Uh, lots of locker space, as you can see as well. And everything looked really nice. In terms of the uh, kitchen area, again, well thought through. Good fridge. Very nice uh, cooker and hob, just got a three gas burner hob there, but lots of storage space for cutlery and for uh, food and pots and pans and stuff, and lots of overhead lockers as well. A really nice microwave oven, very clean, good condition, and also underneath that looks space for your TV, that's where the TV point actually sits. You can also put a TV in the bedroom area separately if you want to, wall mounted. And just above the microwave, some cupboards there too. And then you've got, in the background, you can see the uh, island bed. That pulls out in day mode at the moment. But a uh, very spacious, really wide, open plan view of this. Rear end washroom uh, with Thetford toilet. A good size sink, actually. Nice vanity mirror. And a really good size shower, which look really clean. And again, in excellent condition. So as Helen quite rightly pointed out, a lot of van for the money at 14995 Not included that we could see though was a motor mover, so you're going to have to fork out about £1,000 in round numbers to have one of those fitted. Uh, without a motor mover, caravanning is very difficult unless you've got lots of hands or a small caravan. So back to Gina and Kelly from Chroma, two of our subscribers who we bumped into. They're looking to upgrade their existing caravan. They bought their first caravan, I think they said two years ago. Uh, they bought it privately. They only paid £2,000 for it because that was their budget, to be fair. They've thoroughly enjoyed caravanning, but they've got problems with damp. And the problem started pretty much from day one. So right at the front of the caravan, the whole of the window area uh, lets in water. And uh, they do have a problem. They've, they've got to get it sorted out or they've got to get a new caravan. And that's what they were looking to do. Which brings us on to some of the pros and cons when you buy private. So some of the benefits of buying privately would be you're probably going to get your van cheaper than you would do from a dealer. Also, it's easier to negotiate and knock people down on price, I think. The professionals, they're good at holding prices. You get a lot of extras included, like the TV, probably an awning, all the crockery pots and pans and all the accessories that you would normally have to buy from the dealer. And generally, you're probably going to drive it away on the day of the purchase. On the flip side of that, though, it does come with a whole load of negatives when you buy private, I'm afraid. The first thing to point out is this. No guarantee or warranty. No pre-delivery inspection. The van will be sold as seen. You do have some consumer rights because you need to be making sure that what you're buying is what's been advertised. But no after-sale service either. Once you drive that van away from a private sale, you're pretty much lumbered with it and any problems now are your problems. So our third van we're going to look at is a Bailey's Pegasus Verona. It's a 2017 and it's a four berth and it's a fixed bed. It comes in a little over budget at 15995 but it may be, be negotiable. You might be getting a little more for your money. So let's have a look, Dave. So a quick check on the weights. Uh, 1281 and laden, MTPLM 1450. That's your maximum towing permissible laden mass. I think I've got that right, 1450. So again, most cars would pull that without too much of a problem. Check out the service history, it's part. The warranty's three months. There is a motor mover, that's worth it, that's weight in gold. You've got the uh, Alco ATC, which is also very good as well and worth having. And um, body works in good condition. So, you know, it's the Alutech body shell. These don't ding, you don't get dents in these. You have to take a sledgehammer to that to get a hole in it, really. He says, not really knowing what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, tires, again, I'd check out the tires are okay. So, yeah, it needs a wash and a wax, but I mean, body works good. Rear end toilet, and with a window at the back as well. And this, that would all really shine up nicely, you know, a bit of pride and joy, that'll soon come up. Obviously, we'll buy the A47 here, like as you can see, a lot of dust comes up from the road. You've got a locker under the bed here, and then this is your 
240 volt inlet here and also there's an external uh, 13 amp socket there as well and uh, that's on the awning side some people don't like that not a big deal really you'd, you'd run your power cable underneath your caravan and just lift it through your skirt to plug in but i can understand what they mean about some people not like it and also the fridge vents are on the awning side as well so i have to say i do like the interior of this bailey i can see why helen was attracted to it lovely nice bright um upholstery i like the curvature and these backs i've got a bad back so actually they're very comfortable they're really comfy in fact color coordinated cushions and curtains thing about those is obviously they're original cushions so they've been around for a little while now well since 2017 so what's that for five, seven years but it's actually in really nice condition by looking at it these cupboards i like the the wood finish on these two-tone sort of nice glossy finish some shelves up here pioneer head unit must be there there it is let's just take the fascia off for security so your tv points will probably be in here they are so that's where your tv aerial and your vision plus booster is and some good storage space and i do like the panoramic big windows on the front of the bailey obviously our friends have got baileys and you know, we're quite familiar with them and then you've got a sunroof here helmet lighting both sides and more lighting in here this is a material here um, that's okay it's got, it's got a big blind there two-part blind and you pull it again oh dear pull it uh, the price cards getting in the way pull it again and you've got full blackout there for bedtime or if it's particularly sunny if you just want this fly screen up you just do that and then you would do this and yeah that's your fly screen big window right look over this side kitchen l-shaped sort of worked up slight l-shaped um you know not a massive workspace but but sufficient and it can be extended with a flip up worktop there so that makes quite a difference couple of power points there nice spots i've just noticed on here as well uh can't see any usb Point. so all the vans so far i've not spotted any usb sockets anywhere but you can upgrade these dead easy and cheap as well to do so if you need usb but again like i said you can buy lots of adapters somewhere to store food and somewhere to put plates and cups and what have you day room microwave branded a three gas one electric hob which is nice and clean as is the oven and the grill Thetford Caprice Mark III sounds like a Dell boy. It's the Thetford Capri Mark III. Round sink, right? Big area here. Remember the gas bottle on the outside is over here somewhere, so that takes up a lot of space underneath here as the gas. Little button to flick here, and then you can pull that open. Three shelves and normally a cutlery drawer there. There it is. Could do with a clean, but there it is. Nothing wrong with it. Just wants a clean close that and lock it little slide out here or just another cupboard actually where you can put a few bits and bobs so yeah quite a nice kitchen and look at the size of the fridge look at the size of the fridge and it's very clean with a good size ice box too like it so you've got gas electric and the 12 volt when you're hooked up to the car to keep it chilled you can't chill down from the car folks remember it just keeps it chilled once it's chilled right looks like a retro fit solar panel on top i think it's retro but I'll look, just looking at the way that's finished might be wrong but it looks like a retro fit to me nevertheless you've got solar to keep your battery charged when you're in storage smoke detector carbon monoxide detector a couple of hanging hooks here and all your switch panels for your lights and your electric pump and 12 volt and what have you french bed look french bed love them or hate them um well i think most people don't love them do they have you got a french bed and do you love it good storage over the top i won't open them all up a couple of shelves so you can have a book or a cup of tea or a glass of water by the bed at night uh, we had this in our first bailey i didn't mind it too much but one of us had to clamber over the other to get to the toilet in the night and um, never a good thing to be doing clambering over the other half at any time of the day and then down <laughs> down here and then get in trouble for saying that down here 
that's where the battery is in these baileys under the floor no battery in it one thing to bear in mind when you're buying a caravan from a dealer things like the battery the gas bottles your crockery your everything really you're probably gonna have to buy all that buy second hand privately you'll probably get most of that included in the sale price what you won't get though is any warranty once you drive away with a used private sale caravan the minute you drive that away your problem so I do think there's a real benefit from buying from a dealer but we've done both and we've been lucky both times I think fold up table here I'll just get it out personally because I just don't see the point of having the extra weight little vanity mirror with uh, LED light over the top and a PowerPoint here so you can dry your hair a wardrobe good size that's your PowerPoint for your microwave up there some shelves underneath at the bottom as well and TV point and three pin uh, socket over there as well so that's for the bedroom obviously you would have to have your TV mounted at the front to watch TV in here downside of that is if you're like me you like to put your feet up which I do then I want a bit of a headrest at this end and some cushions and I don't think I'd be as comfortable facing that way as I would be facing this way but a number of you will have this option and probably find it's okay what a lovely van actually for a first time caravan this is not bad starting to get too much interference so i've gone with a voiceover from here on in just taking you through to the rear end of the caravan now and want to uh, just show you the rear washroom with the big window at the back which is quite unusual i'm not sure if i like it but i'm just checking out the shower first of all again lovely clean good size shower and uh, if you were buying any caravan, just check for those cracks and any signs of any damp, like we've mentioned before. Got a couple of lights in here, which is really useful, and a shelf to put some toiletries on. The window's nice, lets in lots of light. Downside is when I'm having a shave. Um, so I'm going to have to have a shave over the sink here, as you can imagine. But I've no mirror in front of me, so if I want the mirror, that's over there. I suppose I could maybe mount a mirror, but... I'm going to be shaving away, look, as I'm explaining here, and then all the water's going to drip on the floor. Not clever. I mean, I horses for courses, I'd prefer to have the mirror there if it was me. That's just a personal choice. And somewhere else, I put some more toiletries, little storage area here. But all in all, this is a good size rear end washroom. In terms of price, can we get that price down? Well, I mentioned earlier that some of the professionals are quite good at holding their price up, but at the same time, they need to move their stock. So everything's negotiable. You know, I would never pay the asking price for a second-hand caravan ever. And if I had to, then I would be looking to um, maybe get some extras included. So that's all about your negotiation skills. So, folks, that's our little look around three what we would call entry-level budget caravans here at Green Trees. And regardless of where you go looking, any dealer, you know, you need to go and do the checks for yourself. Ask the right questions and, um, you know, generally speaking, on an entry-level van, I'm sure you can do a little bit of negotiating if you try hard enough. And then when you've done all that and you've had a couple of years, you can upgrade to one of these babies. Look at this. Just very quick. If you can be looking for your first ever caravan, don't walk in a brand new one first. <laughs> Look at this. You walk in a brand new caravan when you've only got a budget of 15 grand, nothing's going to look as good anymore. But this is beautiful, isn't it? Look at the size of the window in this. Anyway, we're not here to look at this, but I just thought I'd show you quickly what you get. Twin axle. Need a big car to pull this. I wonder what the uh, MTPL is. Actually, not too bad. 17.55. So I'll be able to pull the uh, pull this with the sportage, no problem. Nice. The Pamplona 2024, 34.499. But today, cash, 30,470. Beautiful van, isn't it? Well, we hope you found that useful. And don't forget, like we always say, if you haven't done yet, now's your chance. Hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the notification bell. That will let you know when all the videos are coming out. And leave a comment. We love them. We answer every single one. Uh, but a massive thanks to all the team here at uh, Green Trees, at Deerham in Norfolk. Great guys and some great stock and some lovely caravans. But we'll catch you in our next video coming your way 
very soon. Bye for now.